The fortunes of Maryland football definitely appear to be on the rise, going from three wins in 2015 to six last fall. But that's not really in comparison to what we saw on National Signing Day with the Terps hauling in a top 20 recruiting class, number 18, according to 24-7 Sports. And obviously that means a whole lot more at this point uh, going forward than uh, going from three to six wins. We bring in uh, Ryan Connors from Testudo Times to help us break down the class and see what's going on there at uh, College Park. Ryan, we appreciate uh, you jumping on board. Oh, no, glad uh, glad to be here. So uh, look at the class. Uh, it's not only a, a class of quality, it's it's also a deep class with 28 commits. Uh, just your thoughts when you when you look at uh, who's coming in and who are those those guys that uh, jump off the page at you and in some of uh, Terp Nation in regards to uh, who may make an impact uh, sooner rather than later? Yeah, definitely. Well, with uh, with this big recruiting class, 28 commits, uh, Maryland got, you know, a good mix of depth, which they really needed, and a couple of real like blue chip headliners who can probably come in and, if not start, can contribute pretty uh, pretty well as true freshmen. The best, uh, the ones that jump off the page are uh, definitely four star running back Anthony McFarland from uh, Dematha Catholic High School, which is about five minutes down the road from Maryland's campus. Uh, he was one of the final recruits to join the class and. He's a guy uh, that Walt Bell, Maryland's offensive coordinator, does a lot of creative things. And he's a guy who's probably going to line up in the backfield in the slot and kind of will put what was already a really good Maryland backfield last year uh, and make that even better. Uh, Kasim Hill, who's a local four star quarterback, um, gives Maryland, which the I think the most, the thing Maryland football was most famous for recently was leading the world in interceptions in 2015. Uh, with the new staff, they cut down on that last year as well as they just weren't going to they, – they were throwing interceptions at just a mind-boggling rate that couldn't continue. But um, Maryland hasn't really had a quarterback who uh, anyone who isn't a Maryland fan is probably even going to know in a very long time. And uh, Hill seems like he could be the real deal. Uh, I think Maryland was using him uh, – I also covered basketball. And at the uh, game Maryland played yesterday – uh, Hill was already on the, um, you know, on the poster they were using to sell season tickets. Now that's probably just because they just signed the recruiting class, but um, he's. I think he will definitely have a chance to start as a true freshman. Whether he does, uh, we'll see. Starting as a true freshman in the Big Ten is uh, is a pretty tall task. And then the uh, they also got Marquise Bell and Deion Jones, who are two guys who could potentially start right away in the secondary, and that'll be pretty big. Uh, DJ Durkin singled out uh, Bell at the at his National Signing Day press conference, saying he looks already like an NFL safety. Um, could be hyperbole, but both of those guys are enrolled for the spring semester in Maryland, and uh, Jones is recovering from an injury. But I think uh, both of those guys could potentially be starting. Yeah, Ryan, you're talking to a guy, unfortunately, that I'm a little bit uh, uh, a little bit too well versed in this stuff. So I'll remember some Maryland quarterbacks: uh, Caleb Rowe, Perry Hills, obviously your your latest, Danny O'Brien, five or six years ago. Those guys, but yeah, nobody that that anybody necessarily wants to remember in terms of a uh, stellar play. But yeah, ton of picks two years ago. That was probably one of the big reasons why uh, you were able to compete in the Big Ten and win six games overall and almost get a bowl victory against Boston College. Mm -hmm. Is cutting down on those interceptions. Uh, in terms of fulfilling personnel needs, you kind of address that. Anything else stand out about this class? Anyone in particular that that you kind of like? Um, well, I think they. They ended up with six wide receiver commits in the class, which uh, which they needed some depth after losing three seniors. And they took a lot of guys who are um, – almost all of them are above six feet – or almost all of them are at least 6'2". The one guy who isn't is uh, Taj Capehart, who uh, actually flipped from Maryland – from Virginia Tech to Maryland on National Signing Day. He's 5'10", but uh, might be the most promising recruit they have in terms of being able to play right away. But I like – there's this one uh, – they got all the receivers from the South, actually, almost all of them from Georgia and Florida. And there's one – his name's Carlos Carrier. He's 6'5", but he's only – at least online, he's only 170 pounds. So he's going to be a guy who I doubt he'll play as a true freshman, maybe not even have much of a role as a sophomore. But he's uh, – he just has the physical skills that kind of 
that I'm sure make everyone excited and I'm sure, you know, made Maryland's coaching staff pretty excited. And I think especially with that unit, uh, they just got this big influx of size and that'll be kind of that that'll be I think at least a couple of those guys should turn out well. You know, when you get when instead of getting just a couple three star guys who might be iffy, they went and got six. And then you figure they hope that maybe at least two of them develop into some uh, you know, real real threats on the outside. Ryan, it's an interesting situation there at Maryland because uh, in a sense, you're a bit of a sleeping giant. The tradition is strong going back a ways into the 90s and 2000s. Uh, the, the, the program has been down the last several years in the ACC were not good. You instantly jumped into the Big Ten and got knocked around by just about everybody outside of Rutgers and, and a, a couple teams here and there in the Western Division, especially. Uh, it, it seems like the, the minus is, is the division, the division to get through Ohio state, Penn state, Michigan, Michigan state even is, is going to be extremely difficult. But at the same time, the, the location for recruiting seems to be in a good place where you're close to Pennsylvania, strong, uh, New Jersey, strong, Virginia, strong. You can dip into the Carolinas, uh, that's strong in football. You mentioned what you were able to do in Georgia and Florida. So DJ Durkin, uh, obviously making some serious inroads. Yeah, definitely. And I think, uh, you know, under Randy Edsel, the previous coach, uh, Maryland just wasn't able to really get those important in-state recruits until uh, until Edsel's final season. But then they got two really important recruits who both then once uh, Dirk and once Edsel was fired and Dirk was hired, they ended up uh, flipping to Ohio State uh, as Maryland fans. Uh, Dwayne Haskins was the quarterback and Maryland fans have uh, mixed emotions toward him, I think. But um, yeah, the uh, the division is always going to be the toughest thing about Maryland, uh, and you know the idea that they're ever going to be able to leapfrog, uh, you know, the Michigan to Ohio State's not even you know Penn State, and Michigan State are going to be tough enough. But uh, the idea that you know all of those four teams have to almost have a down year, for, and Maryland has to capitalize for that to happen, um, and that doesn't seem like it's something that's going to happen any time soon but um yeah maryland the the big 10 east it's it's just it's it's so shockingly good right now and uh the only way maryland's ever going to be able to get to anything resembling that level is going to be they have to pluck some recruits out of pennsylvania and new jersey but you know really to get the best recruits that they have in maryland because they historically the best recruits in maryland usually don't actually go to maryland but uh you know dj durkin he came in with the, you know, like the big, the big advertisement with him was that he was a really good recruiter. Um, but it's easier to be a good recruiter when you're recruiting out Florida and Michigan than when you're at Maryland. But uh, he brought in all these guys who are really, you know, his coaching staff was full of guys with the same reputation. And that's, you know, when, when someone gets hired, sure, everyone says they're a good recruiter. But these guys really backed it up. One guy that everyone singles out is the uh, defensive backs coach. His name's Azar Abdul Rahim. He was a uh, he started a high school program in D.C. and turned it into one of the most successful programs in the nation. Then worked at Alabama for a couple of years, and now he's back here. And he's been one of the lead recruiters on a lot of Maryland good players. Yeah, the rest of the top fifteen and twenty in the nation in the recruiting rankings for two thousand seventeen, the usual cast of characters, and then Maryland jumps in there at number eighteen. And I'm guessing that uh, without uh, looking it up, that you were somewhere in the typically in the forty five to sixty range over the last several years. Uh, and DJ Durkin obviously making serious inroads.